When metal parts move against each other, friction causes heat as well as wear and seizure. But if there is a film of oil between them, friction is reduced, movement becomes smooth, and heat and wear are significantly reduced. This effect is referred to as lubrication, and the oil that protects two metal parts from each other is referred to as the oil film. In both the two-stroke and four-stroke engine, engine oil is distributed to its moving parts for lubrication. Lubrication reduces friction and frictional heat, increasing the efficiency of the engine and reducing part wear due to frictional heat. There are differences between the lubrication systems of two-stroke and four-stroke engines. Let's look at the different parts and structures for the system. First, we'll take a look at the lubrication system for the two-stroke engine. Most Suzuki two-stroke engines distribute fuel and oil separately in what is called the Suzuki CCI system. An exception to this is the RM series, which are models made for racing. In the engines of these motorcycles, oil and fuel is distributed together in what is called a fuel-oil mixture. This diagram shows the basic flow of lubrication in the Suzuki CCI system. Oil is pumped out of the oil tank into the inlet manifold with the oil pump. It enters the crankcase chamber together with fuel-air mixture from the carburetor. The oil is mixed with the fuel-air mixture and lubricates the big end of the conrod and its bearings around the crankshaft as well as the piston and cylinder walls and is eventually burned together with the fuel-air mixture, the resulting gases being expelled as exhaust. Engine oil is stored in the oil tank. This tank is equipped with a device to check the remaining amount of oil in the tank. If the oil level becomes low while the engine is running, an indicator light lights up on the instrument panel of the motorcycle. Most two-stroke engines use a mechanical oil pump, which is designed to provide the necessary amounts of oil to places where it is needed in the engine. Because the amount of oil necessary is determined not only by the revolutions per minute of the engine, but also the amount the throttle is opened, the control cable must be synchronized with the throttle valve. Now let's look at the lubrication system for the four-stroke engine. Suzuki four-stroke engines use systems in which oil is stored in the crankcase and in which oil is stored separately in an oil tank. The first type is referred to as the wet sump system. The second type is the dry sump system. Most Suzuki four-stroke engines use the wet sump system. There are slight differences in wet sump systems used for different types of motorcycles. But the diagram you see here shows the basic arrangement for the wet sump lubrication system. As the engine turns, the revolving crankshaft drives the oil pump drive gear through a system of gears. When oil is pumped up from the pool in the crankcase, it passes through the oil sump filter to remove foreign matter. This oil then passes through the oil filter to be cleaned further. 
After cleaning, the oil passes into the different lines that lead to the parts that require lubrication. Oil goes through the counter shaft and the dry shaft and goes on to lubricate the clutch plates and the transmission gears. Oil also goes through the crankshaft and out the oil discharge holes to lubricate the crankshaft bearings, con rods, pistons, cylinders, etc. The oil from the other line that branches off goes through the oil line in the cylinders to the cylinder head, through the camshaft and is discharged to lubricate the bearing area of the camshaft, the rocker arms and the cam chain. Oil that has fallen from lubricated parts goes through the return line back to the pool of oil in the crankcase to be pumped through the system once again. The four-stroke pump is usually a trochoid pump which is composed of an inner and an outer rotor. It is also made so that the oil filter can be replaced. Lastly, let's take a look at the different types of oil used for lubrication. There are two ways that types of oil are classified. There is the Society of American Engineers, or SAE classification, and the American Petroleum Institute, or API classification. The SAE classification is performed according to the viscosity of the oil. Engine oil viscosity changes as its temperature changes. Thus, it is necessary to choose an oil that fits the temperature conditions under which it will be used. The 10W40 grade has a high viscosity index and can be used in a wide range of external temperature conditions. It is thus referred to as a multi-grade oil. The API classification is also referred to as a service grading. Rather than being based on viscosity, API grading is an overall classification that takes into consideration type of engine and conditions the oil will undergo during use. This grading is used most commonly. There are now seven grades from SA to SG, and the closer to SG, the higher the grade of oil. However, because many additives are used, each manufacturer usually makes recommendations for what oil grade is best for its engine. Engine oil eventually picks up impurities, loses its lubricating characteristics and is consumed through sun burning. It must be checked regularly and periodically changed to make sure that the engine is receiving adequate lubrication. The oil filter must also be changed regularly. The temperature of exhaust gases can reach 2000 degrees centigrade. If the engine were left to cool by itself by natural heat transfer, overheating would cause the expansion of engine parts and insufficient lubrication would also result. It is necessary to have a cooling system to maintain the engine at its optimum temperature. There are two basic types of cooling systems, air-cooled systems and water-cooled systems. Air-cooled systems can be divided into natural air-cooled systems and forced air-cooled systems. In natural air cooling systems, fins cast into the cylinder head and around the cylinder itself aid in transferring the heat of the engine to the air of the wind. The fins act to increase the surface area of the cylinder and cylinder head, allowing more air to come into contact with the heated areas. 
The shape and layout of the fins differ according to the characteristics of the engine. Efforts are made to allocate them uniformly so as not to cause the engine to be overcooled. In the forced air cooling system, a fan is driven by the crankshaft to blow cooling air onto the cylinder and cylinder head. Ducts and covers are attached to direct the flow of forced air to the areas of the engine that need cooling. Because the fan is driven by the revolutions of the engine, the engine can be cooled regardless of the speed of the motorcycle. In the cases of many scooters, a forced air cooling system is used because the wind does not come into contact with the engine in many designs. A water cooling system passes liquid coolant through passages around the cylinder and combustion chamber. The heat caused during the combustion is transferred to the coolant and the engine is cooled. This diagram shows how the conventional water cooling system works. As the engine turns, the water pump pumps the coolant through the water jacket or passages around the cylinder and cylinder head. The coolant in the water jacket absorbs the heat of the engine. The heated coolant then passes through the radiator where its heat is transferred to the air that passes through the radiator. The coolant returns to the pump and is pumped through the system again. The conventional water cooling system uses a centrifugal pump such as this. Its impeller is powered by the revolutions of the engine pushing coolant towards the circumference of the pump. The water jacket is designed so as to envelope the combustion chamber and the cylinder. The thermostat senses the temperature of the coolant in the water jacket to make sure that the engine runs at the optimum temperature. The expansion and contraction of the wax inside the thermostat opens and closes a valve which controls the flow of coolant. When the temperature of the coolant is low, the wax in the pellet of the thermostat contracts, closing the valve. When the temperature of the coolant rises, the wax expands accordingly, opening the valve, increasing the amount of coolant sent to the radiator to be cooled. If the temperature of the coolant is lowered due to the temperature of the exterior, the wax will contract, closing the valve. The thermostat is responsible for opening and closing the valve that controls the flow of engine coolant according to its temperature, in order to maintain the engine at the optimum temperature at all times. The radiator is located in a position that comes in contact with wind as the motorcycle moves forward. Coolant enters the radiator from the upper tank and flows through tubes among the fins, increasing the heat transfer surface area. The coolant then flows down to the lower tank after having been cooled. Some models depend not only upon the wind to cool the radiator, but are also equipped with a cooling fan in the back of the radiator. Conventional water cooling systems are also equipped with a reservoir tank which is sealed and pressurized. This is to aid in adjusting the pressure of the coolant within the system. The pressure in the reservoir tank is adjusted with the pressure and negative pressure valves in the radiator cap. When the coolant temperature rises, the coolant itself expands and when a pressure of 0.9 kilograms per cubic centimeter above atmospheric pressure is created, the spring is pressed up and the pressure valve is opened. The expanded coolant flows into the reservoir tank. When the temperature of the coolant lowers, the coolant contracts. The pressure within the radiator cap becomes less than atmospheric pressure the negative pressure valve opens and the coolant in the reservoir tank flows back into the radiator. 
In this way, the sealed, pressurized water cooling system with reservoir tank controls the flow of coolant efficiently and has the advantage of not requiring coolant refills for extended periods of time, making for safe, dependable use.